Well, thank you very much, Chad, for this wonderful introduction. It's exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> thank you very much. You did it again. I always want to say thank you to you for your great leadership and for your great friendship. But the leadership is the most important thing because not just you founding the new way for California, but you're actually backing up your talk with action at the state capitol. We really appreciate that. We admire you and I'm very fond of you and of your great action. And that goes, of course, for each and every one of the Republican legislators who are here today. Each of you has moved past the talking points and to action through your bills and through your votes. So we want to say thank you very much. Let's give them a big hand. I also want to say thank you very much to Danny Hernandez and his entire family. Danny, you and I, we have been working together here at the Hollenbeck Center for the last 25 years, starting the inner city games and after school programs and all this, fundraisers, handing out turkeys at Thanksgiving, Christmas gifts uh, at Christmas time and all this kind of stuff. I mean, you have been a wonderful friend and we are so proud of you, of the great, great, great work that you're doing and dedicating your life to saving so many lives. So thank you very much for the great work. Let's give a big hand to the Hollenberg Center and to Danny Hernandez and his family. And also finally, a big thank you to my very good friend, John Kasich, the governor of Ohio. Uh, thank you for being here today. I mean, you have a wonderful voice for our party. And of course, your resume speaks for itself. I mean, how many Republicans on the national stage can say that they have balanced the budget on the federal, and I'm talking about the federal budget now, as chair of the budget committee? How many people can say that? And may I remind you, you not only balanced the budget, got rid of the deficit, got rid of the debt, and you had a surplus. A surplus. This was the last surplus, may I remind you all, because now we again have a $20 trillion debt. So, John. Get back to Washington and kick some butt, okay? And take care of this mess once and for all. We can't take it anymore. And of course, you balance the budget as governor every single year. I mean, and you've been a fantastic governor. So of course, you're a great friend and I will be praising you up and down because you really have been fantastic. So thank you very much. Your vision and your optimism and your inclusiveness are just what our country needs. So thank you very much for joining us here today. Now we have come together here to talk about something that we all care about very deeply. That is the future of the Republican Party, especially right here in California. I cannot count the amount of times that uh, friends of mine and that uh, colleagues have asked me the question, why didn't you just leave the Republican Party? And every single time I have the same answer. That is, I will never leave. I was a Republican before I even learned the word. Growing up in Austria, I was always frustrated by the big government and the small thinking that I saw everywhere. Government was breathing down on your neck. Then one day, our teacher showed us a documentary about America, and my life changed forever. The giant highways, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Empire State Building, the beautiful cars. I mean, this was a country with big vision, without limits. This was where my dreams would come true. This was the land of freedom, of enterprise and opportunity. Now, I know that every politician says those things every day, but to this Austrian boy, when I finally made it to America, it was true beyond my wildest dreams. I saw firsthand that this is the greatest country in the world. Now, I arrived here, interestingly enough, a month before the 1968 presidential election, just in time to experience my first heated American-style campaign. I remember the Democratic candidate was Humphrey, and the Republican candidate was Nixon. Interestingly enough, when I listened to Humphrey, it reminded me of every Austrian politician. <laughs> that government was the answer to everything. But Nixon, Nixon was a breath of fresh air. He talked about getting the government off your back, 
letting businesses thrive and building a strong military. So I remember watching at home on my little TV, black and white, I knew that when I listened to him, I was a Republican. But today, it's not about me. The day is about every Republican in this state who worries that our message is being drowned out by a few loud voices from the political corners. The day is about the future voters who feel the pull of our great party's message but worry about its current messengers. The day is about what it means to be a Republican in a state that is at its heart environmentally progressive, politically liberal, or socially liberal, and fiscally conservative. Now, when I look around this room, I'm filled with energy and with hope. We all know that the new way forward is absolutely necessary for our party to grow and to thrive. But our new way is not so revolutionary. In fact, it really isn't new at all. It is guided by the traditions and the foundations of our great party. It is the way of Abraham Lincoln who freed the slaves and saved the Union. It is the way of Teddy Roosevelt who protected our beautiful country and put more land aside for future generations than any other president in history. It is the way of Ronald Reagan who projected iron strength abroad to end the Cold War and to promote our incredible business climate at home. The way we have chosen is the way of those great Republicans who came before us. And today we are here because the soul of our great Republican Party that inspired each and every one of us is worth fighting for. Now, I remember 11 years ago, just like Chad was talking about earlier, I gave a speech to the Californian Republican Convention. And I came with numbers and receipts. And I said that our party was dying at the box office. Now, of course, those Republicans were appalled. How could Arnold as a Republican say such a thing? But how right I was. <laughs> the party was going down and down and down. And the day we are the Titanic, <laughs> after it hit the iceberg, but before the last bit of the ship submerged. But unlike the Titanic, we might be able to save Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> before he goes under. We might be able to save Leonardo. So let me tell you about the numbers that tell the tragic story. Only 26% of Californians have a favorable view of the Republican Party. Yeah, you heard me right. 26%. Only 26%. It has gotten so bad that only 59% of Californian Republicans have a favorable view of the Republican Party. So there is no surprise that our party has fallen to just under 26% of registered voters. So the question really is, how can we convey our free market small government principles to the voters when only a quarter of them trust the party? But it doesn't have to be this way. I mean, 78% of Californians think that our budget is a problem. The majority of those Californians prefer paying down the debt rather than spending more money. And only 22% of Californians give the local schools an A grade. And 82% think that we need to use funds more wisely in our education system. So those concerned Californians should be a natural fit for the Republican Party. But many of them put their hands over their ears when the Republicans talk. Our politics must be the politics of solutions and substance. The people of California demand it, and you know something, they deserve it but our party is giving them Twitter fights instead of answers. And it is sinking us. It is time to return to the issues. And there are so many issues that need to be addressed, ladies and gentlemen. So many issues. We can't be afraid to talk about health care. I mean, our predecessors didn't shy away from attempting solutions. Teddy Roosevelt, more than 100 years ago, called for universal health care. And Richard Nixon almost achieved it. 
So if your only answer is that Obamacare sucks, but you have no viable solution, then you're letting down your proud Republican heritage. We can't be afraid, for instance, to talk about the environment. As governor, Ronald Reagan appointed the best air pollution scientists in the world to run the Air Resources Board and to fight smog. And as president, he aggressively pursued the Montreal Protocol to close the hole in the ozone layer through a cap and trade system. And right after him, President Bush used the cap and trade to deal with the acid rain. And in 2006, right here in California, when I was governor of this state, we enacted the cap and trade system to reduce our greenhouse gases by 25% by the year 2020. But this ended in 2020, so a year later, I mean just last year, the Republicans voted to extend that cap and trade to 2030. And what happened? They were crucified by the Republican Party for doing something great, for saving lives, for reducing smog. Think about that. The critics should study history. Now, many of those Republicans that voted for that bill are here today, and I think we should give them a big round of applause for the great work that they've done. You see, my Republican friends, this is the applause you should have gotten from the Republican Party last year. Now, here's another issue that we need to talk about. Republicans can't be afraid to talk about education. If your only answer is, is attacking teachers, you will fail. Because there's so many fantastic teachers in this country. We must talk about the inequality of education and how it leaves so many of our most vulnerable children behind. We need solutions to ensure that a school here in Ball Heights right here in Boyle Heights, has the same high-quality teachers, the same textbooks, and the same computers, and the same amount of money than a school in Beverly Hills. That's what we should be fighting for. And we need to talk about why we are spending more and more money than ever before in education, and less and less money is going into the classroom. What happened? Where does this money go? That's what we should be talking about. Republicans also need to talk about the millions of Americans that are left behind in today's economy. If your only answer is to give a tax cut to people like me, who has hundreds of millions of dollars, or to corporations that have billions of dollars, while cutting job retraining programs for coal workers, then you need to study economics. There's six million open jobs in this country because we don't have the workers who are qualified to fill those jobs because of a lack of education. We need to fix that. To those who think that they can avoid these issues, ignore the solutions and distract the voters with political trolling, let me be clear. The politics of division and anger and resentment can drive a strong base to the polls, yes. But it is tearing our country apart at the seams and nothing is getting done. Our way forward, the new way for California, is open, it's inclusive, and it's action-packed, and it will be victorious. I do not, and we do not fear the truth, make our fellow Americans the enemies, or close ourselves off to reason. We are public servants, not party servants. We love our party, yes, but we are Americans before we are Republicans. We want solutions, not cable news arguments. That is the bottom line. This is the way of Lincoln, of Roosevelt, and of Reagan. This is the way of growth and long-term success. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the new way for California. Thank you very much. Thank you.